Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, the controversy just never seems to end with the Dallas Cowboys versus the Lions for the ending. And before I get to that, Lyle Collins is re-signing on the Dallas Cowboys practice squad, and hopefully he'll be able to help us maybe – just maybe get a ring. Um, also, today, surprisingly, the Jets, you know, the Jets have not had the season that they thought they were going to have. They thought they were going to be all in with Aaron Rodgers. They had a great defense, and they were collecting offensive pieces, and one of those pieces was former Minnesota Viking Dalvin Cook. And we are very, very familiar with Dalvin Cook because Dalvin Cook would always kick our ass whenever we played him. Uh, has not had a great season with the Jets, but then again, nobody with the Jets has had a great season. And he has been released as they go through and start the process of building next year's team early because their ass is out of the playoffs. So Dalvin Cook is a free agent, and I think it's definitely worthwhile for the Cowboys to kick the tires. We're only talking about one regular season game and hopefully, hopefully, four postseason games. Four postseason games. Um, so it wouldn't cost you a whole lot there. And I would think that Dalvin Cook would love to be on a team that's in the playoffs and playing for something. And we definitely need some help. Rico Daddle has been injured last week, and you saw their offensive line with its struggles and our running backs that Tony Pollard alone is not enough. And that, that experience, that beast, that guy could be a guy who could help us in goal line and short yarded situation. So back to the controversy of the Cowboys versus the Lions. Lion fans are going crazy. Um, and, of course, the coach is, he's angry, and he said he's using this as controlled frustration to motivate him as well as team. Um, Glover Quinn, wow, Glover really went all in on this thing. He is pissed like a mother humper. The question is, was it a bad call by the officials, miscommunication, or were the Cowboys paying off the referees? That's the, all the questions that are out there. Let's actually listen to Micah Parsons, a guy on the field, because what happened, and I'll be clear, I think this is what happened, okay? Don't shoot the messenger, deal with the message. What the Lions have been doing all game was they were using number 70 as a decoy, basically saying he's eligible. So when you are an offensive lineman and you have a lineman number, in order for you to be an eligible receiver, you have to go to the official and say, I am eligible, and he has to tell the defense he is eligible, in which case they also announce it over the PA system so everybody knows that this guy is eligible to catch a pass so you can defend him. Otherwise, you would be defending guards and tackles all the time, and that's not the case. So because they were constantly using this guy the lions were using some trickery in here and what they were doing is they had two other offensive linemen there the other guy came out and the referee saw him and said okay i got you number 70 because he's been saying he's been eligible all day they were actually wanting 68 to be eligible and they didn't want the cowboys to know it was announced over the pa system Number 70, the Lions had an opportunity to correct that and say, nah, man, we're, we're trying to be deceptive. He's actually. But they rolled the dice and hoped that nobody would happen, that it would happen. Now, let's listen to Micah Parsons because Micah was there and on the field. And let's get his take on what he thought it was. The blowouts. Uh, college football was even even more crazier. I mean, let's just get straight into it. And we're going to start out with our recap, Lions, Cowboys. If you didn't watch it, it was a monstrous game, great game. Um, we're still healing from that game. It was a hard-fought game, I think, for both sides. But obviously, what came up the most is the con obviously the controversy at the end of the game. And I'm just going to let it know right now, when the ref came up to me, and for some reason, I was kind of like on edge that a play like that was already happening. Um, but when 68 caught it, I did not think he was eligible. The, lot, the ref reported that 70 was eligible. He reported him eligible uh, majority of the game. So, therefore, you know, when it happened, when the flag was thrown, 
I was not surprised. But I was surprised they went for it again after I jumped off sides. That was kind of like... We don't respect you. Wow. But at the same time, I guess in their mindset, we already clinched their, divi they already clinched their division. Um, they kind of have nothing else to lose. Um, so it's just kind of like we want to beat them and uh, any means possible. So, you know, uh, I'm not surprised by it at all. I think that was a – it was a great game. Um, whatever, how the, however they feel, uh, Dan Campbell said he drew it up with the officials before the game. But when they reported, they reported that 70 was eligible. And that's the end of the story. Um, it happens like that. And at this point, we got to move on. You win some, you lose some. Um, but it was a great game. Um, and, you know, it was some great football play. I, anyways, outside of that, Jimmy Johnson was ducked into the Cowboys ring of honor at halftime. Super yes. great. Uh, super happy for Jimmy Johnson. Everything he contributed to Cowboys country, Cowboys nation. Uh, great game. I mean, he's a legend. And I'm super happy for him to finally be in the ring of honor. Uh, you see how many people love and cherish that man. Uh, he's super great. Jerry Jones. All right, I'm going to leave it right there. You can watch the whole 30-minute um, uh, podcast on Bleacher Report. Um, but to piggyback on what I actually hope, um, I hope that with Jimmy Johnson being there, you know, a lot of your young whippersnappers, you know, you look at old timers and say, oh, man, that man doesn't know nothing. Um, you can actually learn a lot from your elders. Um, Jimmy Johnson is a wealth of knowledge. Jimmy Johnson has probably forgot more football than Nick Sirianni knows. That's how much knowledge he has. Now, although that's not really a great, uh, great analogy because Nick Sirianni doesn't really know a whole heck of a lot. <laughs> oh, too soon? Too soon? Okay. But I hope that Jimmy Johnson, uh, with, or excuse me, Jerry gets Jimmy Johnson involved with the Cowboys in the way that you have guys like Charles Haley and, and uh, Nate Newton and guys that are coming back and sharing that knowledge with these younger guys and, you know, showing that hardware and talking about what it took to be one of those special teams because it's hard. It is extremely hard to win a Super Bowl. You know, the Eagles had everything going for them last year, and I mean everything. And they had the personnel, they had the health, they had, you know, the ball bouncing the right way, and it still wasn't enough to win it. Everybody thought they had enough to do it this year. You know, you can look at Kansas City, who has the best quarterback in football, and they're struggling. Winning in the National Football League is hard. And, you know, you need everything to go right. And using a wealth of knowledge like Jimmy Johnson could be a difference between winning and losing. It definitely should motivate those guys to want to be great like those former Cowboys were. All right, good people, you're up to speed on this. I was going to talk about Nick Sariani, <laughs> the word out of Philly. Not my words, not my words. And I know I don't have too many Eagle fans that are hanging around anymore. Um, but that Nick Sariani is actually coaching for his job for this game as well as Jimmy. <sighs> the next couple going into the playoffs. Kind of crazy when you think about it. But, yeah, they won the Super Bowl with Doug Peterson. They got rid of that guy. So what does Nick Sirianni got? Nada. Peace.